inspired to create the center due to the incredible depth of expertise at Duke in engineering, computer science, medicine, and more, and the unique opportunity of having this world-class hospital right across the street. The center was created to transform how we understand and treat disease by combining cutting edge technologies like AI, wearables, and high performance computing. We bring these together to transform how we find, track, and treat disease earlier and more precisely, moving from reactive care to predictive and preventative approaches. Broadly, we're working on developing what we call digital biomarkers. Digital biomarkers are ways to turn continuous data that comes from wearables like consumer smartwatches and smart rings into um, metrics that can tell something about a person's health. The most promising use cases that we're focused on currently in my lab are around infectious disease detection and around detection of early diabetes. Um, so these are two areas where there are biosignals that we collect from the devices that include a combination of heart rate, sleep, physical movement, can even include some more cutting edge sensor types like electrodermal activity um, that give us a picture of somebody's health state. And you can imagine that if you have measurements every second over the course of months or years, a clinician doesn't have time to look through that data, but what we do is we work on how to create digestible pieces of information that are actually clinically actionable. So one of the projects in our lab is building digital twins of the human vasculature. To do that, we're building patient-specific models of the arteries using medical imaging and then running high-resolution physics-based blood flow simulations to create digital twins. In a recent multi-site clinical study, we validated these digital twin measurements against invasive clinical standards and demonstrated strong accuracy. Virtual and augmented reality represent an entirely new way of providing medical information. This ability to uh, visualize internal structures of uh, in, inside the patient in vivid details is, is incredible for uh, clinicians and patients both. Imagine, for instance, that you are a clinician who is aiming to perform a surgery on a patient, and you not only can you visualize the structure of a patient's vessel on the screen, but you can use a virtual environment to place yourself within that vessel. So you can see and truly feel the inner structures of it. And this is an extremely powerful paradigm that effectively can personalize training, care delivery, rehabilitation. Uh, this is extremely promising. Healthcare data today is incredibly high dimensional. I think there's a lot of uncertainty in the current state of medicine in terms of understanding, you know, what the optimal treatment for a patient is. There's often multiple lines of treatment and often you try one, see if it works, and if it doesn't, you go to the next one. With artificial intelligence, we can uncover a lot of phenomena in medicine that we haven't previously understood. We can now learn from the experiences of thousands or even millions of patients where we can generate new hypotheses um, about what might be driving certain medical mysteries using you know, the huge amounts of data we have collected across health records or wearables or omics data. And we can use that knowledge and apply them to new patients we see. We believe that the next generation of engineers need to think about the application of our work, and the best way to do that is through hands-on, authentic, interactive experiences. With our ability to bridge physicians, researchers, computer scientists, and ethicists in the same community of practice, we know that we're gonna be able to train the next generation of students to really tackle these future computational and digital health challenges. Across the center, researchers are already using these tools to make find, track, treat a reality. We're using HBC to study the progression of cardiovascular diseases. I'm using AI and physics-based modeling to create longitudinal hemodynamic maps efficiently. We are enabling the non-invasive remote monitoring of heart failure through wearable devices and HPC-enabled digital twins. We're quantifying the effect of red blood cells on cancer cell transport using HPC. We use machine learning to predict formation of high-risk plaques. 
I'm developing tools to capture a patient's blood flow over weeks and months instead of minutes. I make new microscopes to improve what clinicians can see. We use wearables as well as various assessments to understand head injury in children. The work that we do is centered around understanding how the human body responds to acute injury and how it facilitates the recovery and resilience that's needed to get better again. We feel ready to lead the charge, to prepare our students for not just the technical challenges that they're going to face, but also the societal implications of what they're going to do. That poises us here at Duke to really think critically. What's next? How are we going to get there? Thanks for watching, but now an important disclaimer. The content of this video is not intended to be a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. Viewers should not disregard or delay in obtaining medical advice for any medical condition they may have and should seek the assistance of their healthcare professionals for any such conditions.